guck mal hier, Liebchen. Your mother is very busy with the housework and the cooking for the St. Nicholas Day feast tomorrow. Yes, I know you want to help, but sometimes we can help Mama better if we come and sit with Grandmama for a while, yes? Yes, it is a stormy evening, but don't be afraid. We are warm and safe in here. Now, Liebchen, would you like to hear a story? Yeah. Grandmama knows lots of stories, but there is a special story just for tonight. Now, you know tomorrow is St. Nicholas Day. Yes, you know it very well. You put out your little shoes, and you sing a song about him, and he brings you gifts, yes? He is very kind. But did you know that in some places, St. Nicholas has a helper? Yes, it's true. Well, the reason you didn't know that is because smaller children, like your little sister, or like you were last year, might be a little frightened. So. You know that Grandmama did not always live here in Amsterdam, yes? Yes, that is why I talk a little funny. <laughs> when I was a girl, before I met your Grandpapa, I lived in a place called Austria. In Austria, St. Nicholas has a helper. And that helper is called the Krampus. The tale says that also St. Nicholas brings toys and gifts to the good children. The Krampus comes for the bad children. The Krampus carries chains and bells. The Krampus carries a basket large enough to put a child in. The Krampus carries a large branch from a birch tree to beat the bad children. Oh, I see you are frightened. Well, maybe you should be frightened, Libyan. I certainly was when I was a girl. Every Krampusnacht, that is the night before St. Nicholas Day, like tonight, some of the young men in my village would dress up like the Krampus and go running through the village ringing the bells and shaking the chains. <laughs> I would get so frightened, I would hide under my bed the whole evening. <laughs> but one year, I decided to get brave, and I went outside to see the Krampus laugh. <laughs> but it was snowing so hard, I quickly became lost. All I could see was snow. the running men shaking the bells with chains. I knew that they were not paying attention to much besides the fun they were having. It is customary for the men to have a few drinks before they go out for the Krampus love. So I didn't waste my breath to call out. I could feel that I was beside a tree, so I crouched down. At first I was worried because it was so cold. But soon, I didn't feel cold anymore. I felt warm and sleepy. Just before I fell asleep, I felt myself being lifted by strong arms. When I awoke, I was in a cozy cave. I was wrapped in fur and a warm fire was burning. A voice said to me, Do not turn around, lest you be frightened out of your wits. A sensible child would have obeyed. <laughs> but I was so warm and comfortable, 
I didn't think I could be frightened by anything. So I turned around. And then I saw her.
She told me what all the things were for. The basket was indeed to put a child in, but not to hurt, not to hurt. From time to time she would find a child lost in the woods, and she would place the child in the basket so she could more easily carry it without the child being frightened of her appearance. The bells were so she could attract the attention of the child's parents. When she got close enough to safety, she would set the child down, ring the bells, and run away. The chains und stick. Well, I did not say the Krampus was not a fierce creature. Other creatures live in the woods too, and sometimes find a lost child, but they do not have the same good intentions. Heavy chains and a big stick are quite effective when wielded by the mighty Krampus. We both heard my parents calling me, and I felt her strong arms lift me again. As if our minds were linked, we both knew it was not safe for her to be seen by the running men with their minds clouded by drink. Somehow she knew just the right place to set me down in the snow, so that my parents almost tripped over me. Soon I was back home warm and safe. But I never again believed the tales of the Krampus hurting children. It has been many years since I saw her, Liebchen. And I tell you, I wish I could see her again. I see you are sleepy now. Yes, you are, Libyan, do not argue. Come, I will take you to your little 